Electric bikes are a booming market nowadays. I bought myself an electric bike last year and ever since I've noticed them everywhere, in my hometown, parked around big cities, and across my travels. It seems more and more people are switching from traditional bikes and buying themselves an electric variant. And we have another one to look at today. This is the Mac Fox M20X by E-Ride Fox. But before we get into the impressions of this bike and this company, let's put it together. So someone's decided that it's a really good idea to keep sending these bikes to me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's open this one up and see how it goes. Ooh, hey, front tire's already installed. That's nice. As usual, it's not really fun to watch me remove styrofoam, so I'm just gonna cut forward. I don't know what made me think handling scissors while intoxicated was a good idea. So far, I like this bike. A lot of companies say, oh yeah, the bike we're sending you is 90% complete. And uh, no, it's not. This is what 90% complete looks like. It looks like I just put the handlebars on, attach the battery and I'm good to go. So let's find out what's in these boxes. So you've got the frame of the bike right there and then you've got the two pedals, the battery, there's the charger there and the keys and then they give you a little bag of tools and a manual, of course. So this looks like it's gonna be one of the easiest bikes to put together. First step was actually to put on the pedals. It's important to note that the left pedal is threaded counterclockwise. They also give you this weird ass tool to cinch these up, thought that was worth noting. After the pedals were on, I then put on the handlebars, which was very easy. You just use an allen key to remove these bolts, pop the handlebars into the position you want, and screw them back down. The last step is to install the battery. This was as easy as popping it onto the rails and then using the key to lock it into place, which is the only use for the key. When the battery is in, the bike just turns on using the power button. I'll tell you what, that was easily the fastest I've ever built one of these bikes. Everything was basically ready to go. You just unscrew a couple screws, pop it in. The only thing I put on was the handlebars, the pedals, and the battery. That was easy. There's uh, kind of no reason that shouldn't be as easy as it gets. So now we got to test drive this thing and see how it runs. Now, E-Ride is not your average e-bike company. They're a distributor of electric bikes, so they sell more than just the ones they make. This brand sells bikes that I've reviewed before, which is a nice thing to see, and it seems they're trying to make themselves the number one distributor of electric bikes, so you can purchase them all in one place, which is a very smart idea. But let's talk about the bike in question. This bike comes with a 48 volt, 10 amp hour battery with a recharge time of five hours. The battery is compact, but I wish they would have put it under the seat and give you this area for a water bottle holder or bags. So now the battery, has an on and off switch right here. So you can turn the battery off if you wanted to with this switch. And then you also have the key that unlocks it. But the battery itself, so long as it's housed and in the on position and locked into place, you don't use the key. I mean, it's, it's out of the bike and the bike is off. So this is one of those bikes where the key is really just for the battery and nothing else. The motor is a 500 watt, which is pretty standard and will offer you an average top speed of 20 miles an hour. The max range on this bad boy is 40 miles using only the pedals and roughly 20 if you just use the throttle. Given this battery is a bit smaller, I have my doubts that this is the case, but this bike is also very light, weighing in at 66 pounds, so given the right rider, 40 miles sounds doable. But it is important to note that when the battery gets about below half, the speed limit also cuts down. I was going 20 miles an hour seamlessly and then at half battery I got around 13 at max and there was even one point where the battery got so low that it stopped feeding power altogether. Even though it told me I still had a bar left. I don't think that's a huge flaw, you see diminishing returns in these bikes when it comes to the low charges, but just make sure that if you're riding regularly, you'll want to keep this battery at max as often as possible. One thing I noticed about the tail light is if I turn these lights on real quick, it looks like uh... We've got ourselves a tail light. We also have a front light, but this tail light is not a brake light. So if you press on the brakes, this is just always on. You turn it off and it's the same thing. For those who care, these are mechanical disc brakes which work fine, but after riding bikes with hydraulic brakes, I now have a preference for those. The bike does come to a stop easily though, so I can't really complain. Whoa! Those brakes are better than I expected! You've also got 20 inch by 4 inch fat tires on this bike which helps with that stopping power. More surface area, the easier it is to grip the roads and these tires are really nice. These tires also help with the one downfall I have with this bike and that is the suspension. You have front end suspension but none in the rear where the rider sits. 
This is something that I've come to really appreciate with these electric bikes, and it makes a huge difference for me. Given that these tires are massive, it does help cushion you as you go over bumps, but if I had to ask for anything, I'd cry out for rear suspension. Especially given the seat is stationary, which means you can't remedy this with a suspension seat post either. So after riding it initially, one thing that I noticed is the rear suspension is a lot more important to me than I initially gave it credit for, and I already thought I really needed it. So as I'm going across this road here, there are a lot of brakes in the path, and as I was hitting them, you'll be able to see on camera as soon as I hit them, um, there's really no support for you back here. Um, and that's just, that's just one thing I notice as you ride. I, I just really wish they would have implemented some sort of suspension for the rear instead of it being all metal. You can really feel it even with these fat tires. Now, this suspension in the front, this is adjustable and it has a knob here and a knob here, so you can adjust them both. I've tried adjusting both of them and I haven't really seen much of a difference. Um, I might have to go ham on these things to like really tell if you can lock them up. Um, but as far as the suspension is concerned, as, as far as I've noticed, they are adjustable here. Let's move on to the display. This is a very simple LCD display. It gives you your basic information like speed, odometer, pedal assist modes, of which there are three, slow, not that slow, and 20 miles an hour, which for this bike is honestly a really good top speed. I will say the bike uses a cadence sensor to activate the pedal assist, which is a standard, but the gears are so low that eventually you're just pedaling without any resistance at all, and the bike is doing all the work. Most bikes I've ridden with a cadence sensor has this issue, but it is something to note. I also noticed with this cadence sensor, out of the box, it's quite slow to activate. From a standstill, it takes about three rotations before the energy kicks in, and while moving, it can take up to five rotations before it starts pumping the juice. Now, I also haven't really gone into the settings of the bike, but I'm sure you'd be able to adjust that sensitivity. It's a pretty standard feature, and I definitely recommend adjusting that setting to make the bike a little more sensitive. You also have cruise control on the display. Hold the bottom button for three seconds, and you'll continue to go the speed that you are at. To disengage cruise control, all you have to do is hit the brakes. There's also a walk mode with this bike, which has become a standard feature that I rarely use, but am glad to have. There is one last nitpick that I have with the bike, and that's the throttle. When I'm riding these bikes and I come to a stop, I like to use the throttle to start myself back up again, and then I start pedaling. With this bike, the throttle only activates if the bike is moving at at least 2 miles an hour. From a standstill, you have to pedal up to 2 miles an hour and then you can use the throttle, which for me is not my preference. I'm not a throttle heavy rider. I basically use it to get the bike going from a stop position, and then I'll do the work afterwards. So for my preference, this bike is backwards. But that's not the end of the world due to how upgradable this bike is. What I mean by this is you can go into the advanced settings mode in the bike and turn the throttle on so it can activate at a standstill. I asked them why they decided to ship it so that you can't do that, and they told me that their biggest focus was on safety. They wanted to make sure that if you got on the bike and accidentally punched the throttle, you weren't going to end up throwing yourself into the middle of traffic and getting hit by a car. For the price of this bike, they actually implemented a lot of safety features. For example, you've got the light on the front that's reflective, but then you've got this reflector here too. So they just, they wanted to make sure that this was a very safe bike. So not only is it a very affordable bike, it's very safety oriented, but it's also very upgradable. These electric bikes are very customizable, but the community around this bike has been explosive, which surprised me. It seems that this one is so open source that people have been hacking their way into it and customizing it to their specific needs. They've unlocked the throttle so you can use it at any time. They've gotten the bike's speed cap up to 35 miles an hour and even boosted the acceleration. If you like to tinker and build up your bikes, this is a great one to do it with given the initial price point and the expandability of the thing, which could be enticing for those tinkerers out there, and there are a few things that this bike doesn't have that you may want to know about before you opt into it. You don't have a bell, which means you get to choose your own. You don't have fenders, there's no rear suspension as I mentioned before, and I wonder why they decided to use steel for the frame instead of aluminum. It could have been a cost per unit thing, being that aluminum is generally a bit more expensive, but the weight of the bike could have been dropped significantly, which was a thought that entered my mind. Now, I gotta be honest here. This bike is not my favorite bike that I've ever received. This will be a good first electric bike for your kids, especially given the range, how small the frame is, and how easy it was to assemble. But that's if you don't modify it. If you want a baseline bike that you can build off of, there's already a good community of people out there who've done some great things with this bike, and if I were to buy one, that would be why. 
If you're interested in this bike, or hell, if you're interested in a wide variety of electric bikes in general, I'll leave the link to e Fox's website. They have a ton of great bikes on there, and even a few that I've reviewed before and really loved. Thank you all so much, and if you were researching this bike to see if you wanted it, I hope this video was helpful for you. Ride safe, everyone.